الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد Indeed our praise is due to Allah A praise that's in abundancy and befitting of His Majesty And may the praise, peace and blessings of Allah be upon our noble Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And upon his family and all his companions And know that the good ending is only for the people of Taqwa Know that the good ending is only for the people of Taqwa and there's no transgression or wrongdoing except against the oppressors and the wrongdoers. As for what follows for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters in Islam, has made the religion of Islam to treat and deal with mashakil problems that occur and display themselves between a husband and a wife. Problems that occur between a husband and the wife and Islam requires that the both of them they face whatever problems that they have in their marriage with sabri, with tahammul with patience and carrying the burden that comes from one another because there's not none of us except or many of us you'll find hatred or dislike for his spouse may occur to one of them because of some attribute or quality that he sees in his wife or is not pleased with, or vice versa. And this, or he may see some characteristic in her or she may see a characteristic in him, that which requires him or her to be patient with one another, as long as it's not something that will nullify their religion or characteristic that will nullify their need that we must be patient with each other. And at the same time, when we see things in one another, a husband and wife, or one of them sees something in the other that he or she doesn't like, that they look at the rest of that person's character. And they begin to consider their good outweigh their bad. But this is the reason why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said لا يفرق المؤمن ومؤمنة That the believing man does not hate the believing woman The believing man does not hate the believing woman إن كريها خلقا That if he finds in her a characteristic that he is not pleased with رضى عنها الآخر That he's pleased with other characteristics that she has so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger is informing us the importance of looking at the good that occurs between one another. And when we see something that we're not pleased with, look at the rest of her characteristics or the rest of his characteristics that we are pleased with. For that helps you carry the burden of being patient with one another. For that is the thing that helps you take on that responsibility of being the slow down and wanting to get out of your marriage. For Islam, brothers and sisters, Islam and brothers and sisters in Islam, it came to fix the problems. 
It came to make life easier and happier. All we have to do is follow the ingredients that Allah and His Messenger has left us with. Because it's not none of us except that we all see in one another faults that we're not pleased with. But we have other fault characteristics that we are pleased with. And we must remember when we hate something in our spouses or dislike a characteristic that it's important for us to realize likewise, just as we find things in them that's not pleasing with us, they find things in us that's not pleasing with them. And they carry its burden. We are shakatim. We are twins to one another, the male and the female. He falls short, she falls short. He, he does what's correct, and likewise, she does what's correct. So just like you have things in your heart, she does also. And consider that. Consider that and weigh that. And build that relationship on the good which outweighs the bad. And strengthen those good qualities and help one another to remove the bad ones. And so based on this, the Quran and the Sunnah has obligated upon us to look at the means that the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger has given us to deal with marital problems. To deal with differing that occurs because of the shoes, because of recalcitrance, because of one refusing to give the other it, other its rights. That we have to first see what the Quran and the Sunnah tells us how or shows us and explains to us how to deal with it. And not just automatically just jump out of the marriage. But this happened too much and too many times. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established in Islam that when it is the woman who has a problem with her spouse that Allah has given a remedy to try to solve the marriage between the two of them without anyone entering into the situation. Likewise, if the husband has, is the one who has the issues with his wife and he feels as though that he wants to resolve it, he don't go outside and get outside help. Not the family, no. At first they try to resolve it amongst themselves, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established. So if there's an issue that the woman is having with the husband, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a surah to Nisa, وَإِنِ مُرَأَةٌ خَافَتْ مِنْ بَعْنِهَا نُشُوزًا أَوْ إِعْرَاضًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if the, husband, if the wife fears from her spouse, her husband, recalcitrance, or distancing himself from her, turning away from her, not seeing that, this may lead to divorce. Allah Ta'ala tells her فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِمَا That there is no sin on the two of them أَنْ يُسْلِحَا بَيْنَهُمَا سُلْحَا That they come to some mutual agreement and reconciliate between them وَالسُلْحُ الْخَيْرِ Then Allah Ta'ala reminds us that reconciliation is the best. And then Allah reminds us when this situation occurs that there's a possibility or that different things that presents itself to the soul when you have to reconciliate. Because Allah Ta'ala says, That stinginess, selfishness, niggardliness presents itself to the soul. Meaning at the time when you must reconciliate. Meaning the person thinking about their rights. Each one, this is what I want, I've been violated, this is what I want, and I've been violated. But sunnah requires to put that niggardiness, that stinginess, that selfishness to the side and come to the table. And this ayah was revealed to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when Sauda, the wife of the Messenger of Allah, feared that the Messenger of Allah did not want may leave her because her old age didn't allow her to fulfill her obligations to her husband of intimacy. So she feared he may leave her. So Allah revealed that she didn't know what to do. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this ayah to make reconciliation, to walk the leave off each some of each other's rights. And so she decides that she was the one who had feared that he would leave her. She gave up her days to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So that she will, the Prophet will not divorce her, she will be his wife in the Jannah. But this is what occurs when a woman has fearing her husband may leave her. They come to some compromise, something that is agreed upon between the two of them that they feel comfortable with, both parties. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described that if it is the man who's having a problem with the wife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّتِي تَخَافُونَ نَشُوزَهُنَّ And those women in which you men fear their recalcitrance, they will disobey you. That those men that fear that from their spouses, Allah says, وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ Allah ta'ala says, فَعِذُوهُنَّ Admonish them. وَهْجُرُوهُنَّ فِي الْمُضَاجِعِ and abandon them in the bed. وَضْرِبُوهُنْ And Allah says, strike them. فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ And if they obey you after that, فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ سَبِيلًا Do not transgress, do not do anything against them. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلِيًّا كَبِيرًا For indeed Allah is the one who is the most lofty and the biggest, the greatest. Meaning he will get revenge if you violate others towards your wives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this ayah, he tells us first al-wa'ad, admonishing. And that is saying things that will encourage her back to going to being obedient to her husband. That which will, mentioning those things, bayan is the wa'ad in dhalika, clarifying the reward she will get from Allah for doing so. In the, from the book in the sunnah. As for when that does not benefit, the next means is to be followed that Allah clarified in his ayah. And that next means is boycotting. And what was the boycotting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned? He says boycotting them in the bed, not outside of the bed. Meaning, while you're in the bed, turn your back to them. If this, in order for that to be as a means for her to feel that he's displeased with me and he's angry with me. It is not to be an abandonment or boycotting of her in totality, just in the bed. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned if that doesn't work, he's legislated, what do they do when they strike them? It, this striking only occurs when the other ones don't work. And this striking that Allah ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran is a striking that don't need bruises, that do not break bones, but it's more of a reprimand if this is something she got the type of nature will reflect her and she will turn from what she's doing. This may not be the solution for, the one, for many women when we will chase her further away. For the Messenger of Allah never had to implement this. And he said the best of you are those who don't. Strike your wives, and I'm the best of you to your wives. To their wife. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah legislated this, but it's with these conditions. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated, Tahjuruha fil madja' that he boycotts her in the bed, for in aqbalat. And if she still continues on, وَإِلَّا فَقَدْ أَحَلَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تَضْرِبَهَا دَرْبًا غَيْرُ مُبَرَّحْ مُبَرَّحْ وَلَا تَكْسِرْ عَظْمًا And that, Allah, that doesn't work. Allah gave the legislation of striking them, but a striking with no bruising or breaking of any bones, but a striking of reprimand that will make them desist and refrain. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated, and if she still continues, with her circumstance, for Allah made permissible her, if she feels that way, to ransom out of her marriage. Legislated khula. And if it's the man, he can divorce his wife. But these are the steps that must be taken to resolve the problem. And if the problem can be resolved inwardly between the husband and wife, 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated to have an arbitrator to intercede. As Allah ta'ala says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا And he's talking to those in authority. In the Muslim world, it's your judges, it's the people, the court system. For us here, it's the masajids, it's the family, it's the students of knowledge that's qualified to do this. Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ He's telling them that if you fear شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا Splitting between the two of them. That if you fear splitting between a husband and wife, فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهِ Send an arbitrator from his family, وَحَكَمًا مِنْ أَهْلِهَا And somebody to arbitrate from her family. And then Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحًا that if the two of them want reconciliation, you have fit in lahu baynahuma. That Allah will grant success towards that between them. Inna Allah kana aliman hakima. For indeed Allah is the all knowing and the all wise. Now, after all of these attempts, brothers and sisters, has occurred between us, and it don't work, this is when divorce is allowed in Islam. This is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowed divorce. So that they won't violate each other's rights. For this statement of Allah, of an arbitrator, Ibn Kathir says, فَإِن تَفَاقَمَا فَإِن تَفَاقَمَا أَمْرَهُمَا وَقَالَتْ خُصُومَتُهُمَا بَعْدَ وَسَائِلِ الْعِلَاجِ الْمَذْكُورَةِ بَعْثَ الْحَاكِمَ ثِقَةٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الزَّوْجِ وَثِقَةٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الزَّوْجِ لِيَجْتَمِعَا فَيَنْظُرُوا that Ibn Kathir says in explaining this ayah from Surah Al Nisa, he says that if the affair between them becomes major and blows up, and the argument and the fighting becomes long after the previous means have been attempted that we mentioned, then that's when. The, the ruler or the, the one who's sought to deal with this affair sends an arbitrator from his family who's trustworthy, who has knowledge, who's what good. And likewise, she sends someone from his family who's trustworthy, who has knowledge and want reconciliation, want, want to fix the problem. And when they look at the situation, they gather the two of them and they look at the affair of the husband and the wife. And they do that which is going to produce what is best, what's going to rectify and produce good, whether that be separating them and the courts to make deciding that they should be divorced, or whether that be success of coming back together upon the terms that the arbitrators have presented. But this deen of Islam has covered it all. But it's upon us to follow it. It's upon us to first learn it and then follow, understand it and then follow it. Not jump up and just divorce. But that's not the deen of Islam, brothers and sisters in Islam. We're supposed to first fix it between the husband and wife. If it's the woman that has the problem, we mention what you do. If it's the man who has the problem, we mention what you do. Then if that don't work, we get arbitrators. And if you have non-Muslim family members, don't have Muslim family members, or Muslim family members that don't fit these characteristics to represent or arbitrate, then we go outside to those whom we trust from amongst the believers, preferably those who have knowledge. This is how we resolve our problems. If many of us took these steps, we wouldn't be getting divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried and divorced and remarried. But rather, we'd be making decisive decisions that which represent the best example for the husband and the wife and for the children and for the families involved. We ask Allah to guide us to the key book and the sunnah make it beloved to us. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum. I ask Allah to forgive me and you. Astaghfiruhu innahu ghafoor rahim. For indeed Allah is often forgiven. And seek his forgiveness for indeed Allah is often forgiven and most merciful. Alhamdulillah.
بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب الله تعالى ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد brothers and sisters in Islam this was an attempt to clarify the greatness of this religion and how it's our way of life and that being a Muslim isn't just praying five times a day and fasting in Ramadan and making Hajj and giving the obligatory zakat but practicing Islam and being a Muslim is following what Allah has legislated to fix the problems of mankind for if we return back to this, we will find happiness and success. As Jubair ibn al-Mut'im radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah, that he, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abshiru, be happy. فَإِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ تَرْفُهُ فِي يَدِ اللَّهِ وَتَرْفُهُ فِي أَيْدِيكُمْ فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ فَلَنْ تَهْلَكْ فَلَنْ تَهْلِكُوا وَلَنْ تَدِلُّوا أَبَدًا He said, Be happy, rejoice, for indeed this Qur'an, it, the end of it is in the hands of Allah, and the other end of it is in your hands, so cling firm to it. Your messenger talking. Cling, we cling firm to it. For indeed, you will never become destroyed, nor will you ever go astray, ever. And this hadith narrated in Tabarani, and Shaykh al Bani authenticated his sincere. And this is the Quranic ingredient to resolve our issues, and not to be hasty, and not to take our own cultural means. And not to you use any means other than what Allah has legislated. And only take cultural means if it's in agreement with what Allah has legislated. And this is how we resolve marital problems. You find many sisters or brothers, they go and talk to the whole world about their problems between them and their spouse. Never ever to make the attempt to resolve the problem between the two of them privately nor going out to get an arbitrator. She got to tell the whole family about the problems. The whole family got to know. Every little thing. This is not Islam. Privacy. The basun lahunna. That she, he's a covering, they are a covering for them, and we're a covering for them, as Allah Ta'ala has described us in the Quran. So this is what we supposed to be doing and striving our best, brothers and sisters in Islam, to use these means to find success. Well, the Qur'an and the Sunnah, as we heard Sheikh Salih Fawzan and others have mentioned, that the Kitab and the Sunnah, that marriage in Islam is great, it's been laid out for us. The issue isn't marriage, but the issue is who you marry. Because if you marry the right person, no matter what the issue is, y'all can resolve it. Be wrong to marry, wrong to marry the wrong person, no matter how much you try, it'll never work. So that's what's most important. Find someone that's compatible to you. Find someone that has been with them. Find someone that has patience with them. This is how we're supposed to be with one another. Look for the character and the deen. And then proceed that with having knowledge of the rights of one another. Hukuku. Know the rights of the husband, know the rights of the wife, and then focus on the other rights more than your own. After you learn both rights. Because if the husband focuses on his wife's rights, that's what Ahlirim tells us, if the husband focuses on his wife's rights, and the wife focuses on her husband's rights, yet they know each more than they focus on their own particular rights, then nobody's rights will be violated. And if it do, they repent. But like this is how the believers are supposed to be. Because many of our youth don't want to get married because how they see mommy and dad. The evil relationship between them. And Allah Ta'ala has required us, even when we get divorced, to resolve the problem in a good, amicable manner. Not in a fighting manner. Once we have tried these three attempts, Allah says, That divorce is two times. And He says what? For bi بِمَعْرُوفِ 
keep them in goodness or release them in excellence not fighting and hating one another that's not how we're supposed to because you want to want to marry somebody else one day and if that person go check out your background and he asked your wife you ask your ex-wife ex-husband or she asked your ex-wife how was his character if we follow the ingredients of the kitab and the sunnah she's going to speak good of it just didn't work out between us we did everything Allah and his messenger said we try to resolve it between the two of us we got outside help and it led to divorce and we divorced in kindness but many of us we ex that human muslim out or that muslim brother like he don't exist I would never refer anybody to go to them to ask about me. Because we don't follow what Allah Ta'ala commands us in his book. As Allah Ta'ala says about the women, that أَخَذْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقًا غَلِيبًا In Surah Tanisa, he said they took a serious contract. And some of Ibn Kathir and others, and Imam Al-Tabri and others of the scholars of Tafsir, they say this serious contract is that you keep them in kindness and you release them in kindness. This is paramount. You want success in marriage and success in divorce. Because your children are watching you. And when your children are looking at you, you poorly represent this way of life, they don't want to get married. Especially living in a society where marriage has no value. Fornication is invited towards like it's honorable. And we make it look ugly when the religion came to beautify. That's why Allah Ta'ala describes in the Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى That whoever does righteous deeds from male or female, وَهُوَ الْمُؤْمِنِ وَهِيَ بِرِيبَ فَنُحْيِيَنَّهُمْ حَيَاتٍ تَلِيبًا We will enliven them with this beautiful lifestyle because they adhere to the righteous deeds with the kitab these actions that we're describing are men amin al-sadih some righteous deeds that we must adhere to that we must cling to so when we get divorced or we stay together everything is in goodness and in kindness and the children want to imitate mommy and daddy whether that be in marriage or divorce but when you represent things wrongly and your children imitate that in you, your messenger said, Man sanna sunnatun sayyatin falahu wizruha. That whoever practices the evil tradition for them is the sin of it. Well, wizru man amila bi. And the sin of every one who follow him in that. Well, I am kusudarika min awzari min shayah. And that will not decrease them in their sin whatsoever, meaning the one who's newly imitating you. Won't decrease their sin, but y'all gonna share. And you started that. And remember that. Remember the statement of Rasulullah when you deal with your spouses. For success is in this deed. Success is in this way of life. Successful truly are the believers who follow these ingredients. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. O Allah, give us the good in this life and the good in the hereafter, and protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. ربنا لا تزل قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهبلنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب وأقيم الصلاة.